जय हिंद एवरी वन सो वेलकम टू दी वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एक्टिविटी प्लानिंग सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो सेशन वी विल बी सींग वट आर द वेरियस प्लानिंग दैट विल कम अंडर द एक्टिविटी मैनेजमेंट सो द बेसिक ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एक्टिविटी प्लानिंग इज टू यू नो यू हैव टू प्लान द एक्टिविटीज previously uh, when you, whenever you are going to implement those activities so the objective of software project planning is to provide a framework that enables the manager to make a reasonable estimates of uh, resources cost and schedules so these are the objectives of activity planning so first of all we will see the feasibility assessment so in the feasibility assessment it is the uh, the question that we, that will arise before the implementation of those activities so what is those questions so is the project possible within required time scale and the resource constraint so whenever you are uh, planning to implement a project or to or to you know emphasize on the uh, planning schedule so you have to first of all assess those feasibility parameters that whether that particular project is possible within those time requirements and are you aware of having all those resources that needs to be taken care of under this project implementation so the second one is the same that is the resource allocation so what are the most effective ways way, uh, ways of allocating resources to the project so uh, the question arises here is when should the resource will be available to you like if you are implementing a project then you have to see what kind of uh, language that you want to implement what are the other parameters that you need to implement under that project what will be the environment in which you are working upon so those resources would be available to you before implementation or actual implementation of your project so basically you have to find out what are the various ways or the effective ways in in that form you will be able to have those resources before the implementation or starting of the project the third point is you have to find out the costing so what is the detailed costing how much how much this particular project will cost to you what would be the expenditure that will be taking place how much profit that you would be having and how much uh, you know you you have to spend money on the teams on the resources on everything that you are planning to implement under this project so the next point would be here is motivation so what is the motivation behind implementation of this project like you have to provide the targets that is being monitored by you know different uh, clients and the different team members and what what you have to do is you have to find out those targets how you will be able to achieve those targets in the various ways that would be a kind of a motivating factor to the to your staff so you have to find out what are those ways that you will be able to motivate your staff so that your staff will be able to implement the project under the time given to them and the last one is the coordination obviously when we are planning something uh, when we are implementing something then we have to see what would be the coordination between various staff members so how your staff in the different department would be able to work under a team so that there there would not be any communication lag between them now what are the project schedules so project schedule is like before work commences on a project or you can say before the actual implementation of the activities of the project it is a kind of a you know a, a, a part of the uh, implementation where you have to schedule all these activities planning that the project must be developed under this level under this dates or these are the dates then various modules would be covering on how you will start the activity how should your activity would be starting and how should it would be going to finish so how much you know resources you will be requiring how much staff members will be there how much team members will be going to be needed by you under this project so these are the schedules that we have to implement or we have to plan before the actual implementation 
so when the once the plan has been refined to this level of detail we can call it a project schedule so when when we are planning to implement this project we will be having a project schedule before the actual implementation so, so this will help us to actually uh, you know find out that uh, how we are going to start and how we are going to end now what are the project schedules so basically uh, we are creating a project schedule and this project schedule is comprises of four main steps okay so the first step is to producing the plan said so that what we are doing we are producing the plan to decide what activities that needs to be carried out and in what order they are to be done so first of all we have to find out those activities that needs to be done and in what ways or in what order that we are going to finish those activities the ideal activity which uh, uh, the activity that will be uh, under the subject of an activity like risk analysis these are the uh, potential activities that, that needs to be found out at the early stage so we have to identify those activities which will create a problem to us or it will create a problem in the upcoming a uh, time or the implementation time so we need to find out those potential activities first and we need to find out the problems associated with the activities or it going to be you know uh, uh, it going to be implemented at the actual or the real time system so the third step is the resource allocation that we have to find out what are the various resources need to be done and uh, what are the various uh, you know resources that needs to be taken care of while the actual implementation of the project and the final step is the schedule production so we we need to find out what 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 would be the production what what uh, at what stage we are coming up with what kind of a module and at what stage we are finishing up the modules how we are integrating it at what time we are integrating it so the, these all these things we need to be taken care of under the project schedule now how you will going to define the activities so a project is composed of a number of related activities so there are number of activities before the actual implementation which comes under the project activities a project may start when at least one of its activities is ready to start so whenever you are having a, a project schedule you are ready with your one kind of an activity then at that point you will be able to start your project a project will be completed when all of its activities have been completed so your project will be only completed whenever uh, when only your scheduled activities has been completed an activity must have a clear start and a clear stop so you must be having the right amount of idea that at what stage you are starting your project and what stage you are ending your project an activity should have a duration so your activities must be bounded by the limitations of the time that you are uh, taken care of like whenever you have to start the activity and and what time you are finishing your activity some activities may require that other activities are completed before they can begin so this is called the dependency upon the other activities so one activity is totally dependent depending upon the other activities of their finishing so it is like one activity will be going to finish and then only your second activity will be going to start so how you are going to identify the activity so there are three approaches on that basis you will be able to identify the activities or task that make up the project so the activity based approach the first one is activity based approach the second one is product based approach and the third one is hybrid approach so activity based approach is a kind of an approach in which you are uh, you know creating a list of all the activities that overall going through with your project or the activities that the project is throughout involved into it so these this is the approach in which all the activities that that is going to be implemented under this project will be coming up now when listing these activities particularly for a large project it might be helpful for us to divide to to you know divide this project into different different stages so the main stages would be considered as a separate stage there would not be any kind of you know dependency upon one activity to the another activity so we will be going to divide our project into various stages in which the dependency would not be there and rather than doing this in a ad hoc manner we will be you know actually taking care of all these uh, risk management all all the task which are uh, which could create a problem in the implementation 
and it is a much favored way because uh, we are generating a task we are generating a list to create a work breakdown structure so here comes the word wbs so it is like you are creating uh, your uh, list of activities into different stages and you are actually breaking down these structures you are so you are breaking down the implementation of these activities so in this way you are actually planning your implementation into a, a much efficient way so in this diagram we will see that the project is being divided into three categories that is analysis design and build so in the analysis phase you are actually analyzing you are actually taking care of the feasibility study resource allocation and all that in the designing phase again you are dividing it into three sections that is data design process design and physical design so in data design you are actually uh, going to design the relation between the various data uh, factors or the relation between the logical data so you are actually finding out what would be the you know uh, you, the dependency up among data values and in the process design you are designing how you will be able to implement that uh, particular data values or how you are actually processing those modules uh, or implementing those modules in the live implementation or the uh, uh, product generation and in the physical design you are actually making up the design which will be going to uh, seen by the user uh, it could be your gui it could be your interface or it could be the anything which can be easily uh, easily taken care or easily used by the client okay so the product based approach so in product based approach uh, we are actually uh, breaking down the structure of the product and we are making a kind of a product flow diagram so in the product flow di flow diagram what we are uh, going to build is we are going to build a kind of a, a flow chart in which we will be see how data will be moving from one part to the another part so each product you know uh, the products uh, are requiring kind of an input so each product will be uh, associated with a kind of an input and after that this particular process will be generating a kind of an output so this uh, uh, you know you can say uh, if you are taking an example of any kind of a software then that particular software is totally dependent upon some kind of uh, data values so that data values will be inserted into this into the software and that particular software will be processing some of the uh, algorithms on that particular data values and you will be having some kind of output so this is like transformation of one activity to the another activity and you are actually identifying what is going to be transformed or what kind of product you are going to have at the last okay so this is the requirement updation like in this this particular section we are dividing up our, uh, our requirement a specification into three parts that is data catalog requirement catalog and processing specification so basically what we are doing we are actually um, dividing our activities we are dividing up our, our uh, product based approach into different values that is data requirement and processing okay so in the hybrid approach what we are doing we are actually merging out the activity the product based approach as well as the activity based approach so in the hybrid approach what the wbs is basically entirely depending upon the structure of the activities so the figure on the next slide like uh, this one uh, this is based upon the simple list of final deliverables and for each deliverable a set of activities required to produce that product so in a product of any size it would be beneficial for us to introduce additional level structuring and uh, and as product and activities so basically what we are doing we are actually uh, you know we are dividing our project into different components so based upon that components we are designing the list of the processes that needs to be taken care of under the actual implementation so the product the, or the project is going to be divided into these section this is your installed system then your software components then your user manual and the training courses so you can see installed system will be having all these section all these uh, list of the sections that that needs to be taken care of before the actual implementation like analysis like outlining the design like detail making the detailed design like testing out the system integration of the system delivery of the system user requirements and all that now in software components we are actually seeing 
what kind of software that we are working upon like review requirements what would be the review requirement what were the outline of the design what is the detailed design under this of various software that will be going to integrate our, in our project what would be the code software what would be your testing software all these things will come under this component the next one is the user manual so in the user manual we will be analyzing the requirements and then uh, you know we will be saying that what would be the design manual we will be going to write the test we will be capturing the screenshots we will be doing the page settings we will be printing out the manual so basically we are creating a kind of a documentation of that implementation in order to have this documentation it will help uh, it will help user as well as the developer in order to develop new projects and the user to understand the software that has been developed and in the training courses we are actually again providing a kind of a courses uh, through which we will be going to deliver the knowledge to the end user as well as uh, our intermediate users so we will be again writing out all these manuals into it printing out the handouts we are delivering the courses we are giving giving the lectures we are giving the trainings so these particular sections has been dividing our project into these forms so that we will be able to analyze at which stage we are in and at what time we have to complete these particular activities thank you